You're listening to The Whole Truth, a Resources Rising Stars podcast. If you like lithium and you like exploration, this latest episode of The Whole Truth podcast is going to be right up your alley. I'm Paul Armstrong. I've just had a fantastic chat with a man called Peter Turner. He's the managing director of Kairos Minerals. The company's just done a great deal to bring in another lithium company by the name of Global Lithium onto its share register. Global Lithium is much bigger than Kairos and it now owns 10% of Kairos. It clearly likes what it sees at Kairos' lithium project near Kalgoorlie, and well it might. Global Lithium has a project right next door to Kairos' project, and they're obviously keen to grow it over the boundary fence, as they say. Peter Turner takes us through what they've got on their own ground next to Kalgoorlie, but also what they've got up in the Pilbara, where they have more lithium ground and a big gold project with plenty of ounces and plenty of upside. I'm sure you'll enjoy the chat, and for those who like the risk and reward ratio or equation associated with lithium and exploration, this is one for you. Peter, Kairos has just done a great deal with another lithium company. What does it mean and what is, what's it all about? Well, it's a fantastic uh, deal. It's a financing for Kairos and it's in two parts. Uh, we issued 10% new shares to a company called Global Lithium. They're a major, major player in the lithium space in Western Australia. Uh, and we're very happy to have them on board as, as a ma- major shareholder. And we've also announced a 6.55 million uh, rights issue, uh, fully uh, underwritten, uh, renounceable rights issue to shareholders. Now, the placement, which will raise $4 million from Global Lithium, uh, was set at a price that's a slight premium to the market. And the rights issue effectively is, a, is at a, a 12% discount to the market. So we're basically uh, rewarding shareholders, uh, at the same time bringing in uh, a, a tier one lithium company into the registry of Kairos. So why would Global Lithium want to have 10% of Kairos? Global Lithium's what, 10, 12 times the size of Kairos, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think you have to ask those guys that question. But from my perspective, they're interested in the Row Hills project. And the Row Hills project uh, is a project that we've been working on for a number of years now. And we've highlighted some really, really interesting and crucial uh, lithium anomalies in soil that we're about to drill test. And I think Global Lithium's interest in Kairos is really um, on what we're going to deliver in the drilling when we start, uh, hopefully, at the end of July. So Global Lithium is Kairos's neighbour, isn't it? So just so people can follow where we're at here, Global Lithium has a project called the Manor Lithium Project. That's next door to your Row Hills project, and they're both roughly, what, about 100 kilometres from Kalgoorlie. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So Manor is a lithium tantalum project. It's got current resources of about 32.7 million tonnes at 1% uh, lithia. Uh, it's spodumene pegmatite, which is really the, the interesting uh, lithium mineral. And we've defined uh, particularly two uh, key prospects uh, in our stable, in our pipeline of lithium projects in that area. Uh, one called Black Cat and the other called Crystal Palace. They're really within the shadow of mana. And this is really, I sense, why Global Lithium is very, very interested in the, in the Kairos story moving forward. Um, they're obviously keen to, to look at what else is in the neighbourhood and have really earmarked us as a, as a potential uh, investment opportunity for them. So I suppose the key question that investors would be asking here, Peter, is have you got lithium on your ground? Well, that's, that's the billion-dollar question, really, uh, that we need to answer. And we certainly have uh, really tier one uh, soil anomalies, lithium soil anomalies, but they're more than just lithium. Uh, we've got the suite of elements that you really want to find in, in soils, um, a coincidence of lithium, cesium, beryllium and tin. They're all uh, pretty long words, aren't they? What, what do they mean? Why they, would they be important to an investor? Well, it's interesting because... If you're looking for lithium and you're looking for spodumene pegmatite deposits, you really need to have the collection of these multi-elements together. And it's the coincidence of these that makes these anomalies really, really more significant. Um, So we can't see any rocks on surface. And what we really have to, uh, I suppose, um, rely on is is the geochemical signature of these. So, And everything is telling us that 
that these soil anomalies uh, are, uh, are overlying uh, a fertile lithium system. And what I can say is that uh, although we can't see the rocks on surface, we're pretty sure that the response, uh, the geochemical response is due to a lithium pegmatite beneath surface. So you've got a lot of smoke. You've got a lot of smoke right next door to a pretty large lithium deposit owned by Global Lithium. You've got the smoke. Uh, you believe that there's a fire raging below the surface, is it, the, the long and short of it? That's correct. Uh, and certainly at Black Cat. Black Cat's our lead project. It's 2.8 kilometres long. It's up to 300 metres wide at surface. And we can't wait to uh, drill the fire, if you like drill to see really what's there. So 2.8 kilometres long. So if there's lithium in those rocks below the surface, as the signature on top would suggest, that's going to be worth a huge amount of money, isn't it? That's a huge, huge anomaly. Well, we hope so. And the Kairos ethics really are to uh, to deliver dis- discoveries for the shareholders. Uh, that's the best way to, to get a share price going, is to deliver a discovery. If you can discover... Uh, new minerals that certainly are, 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 are you know, are valued hugely to a neighbour next door who's got a proven deposit. And, of course, uh, there's going to be a lot of interest in uh, in Kairos going so, forward. So how are you going to find out if there's lithium in those rocks below the surface? And I suppose, when are you going to find out? Well, we need to, uh, we need to dot some I's and cross some T's with heritage. Uh, the heritage studies that we're undertaking and the negotiations are really advanced. And the good news is that we hope that uh, we can conduct our first heritage survey in that area in early July. Uh, and with all going well, we should be drilling by the end of July. But of course, there's a new Heritage Act come in. And we just need to make sure that we are doing the right thing by the law uh, and really um, moving forward in a sustainable way with our traditional owners, uh, who we have a very good relationship with. So all going to plan, you're going to know one way or the other whether you've got the uh, the big pot of gold into the rainbow or, in this case, the, uh, the pot of lithium below the surface. Absolutely spot on. But we've got a number of targets here. So we, we announced a few weeks ago uh, a suite of new uh, prospects as well in, in the same area. Um, and the geochemical side really gets you into the area, gets you into the anomalies and and the and hopefully the, the spodumene pegmatite areas. But you really need to drill test to, to prove up both um, the type of rock that's there and also the mineralogy as well. Now, you, you, Kairos is not just looking for lithium in the eastern goldfields of Western Australia, is it? You've got some lithium prospects up in the Pilbara. We certainly do. Uh, are, they, one- are they any good? <laughs> they are fantastic. Uh, we actually neighbour, we um, are adjacent to Pilbara Minerals Pilgangora project to both the east and the south. Now, I mentioned east and south because we know that their deposit dips uh, to the east and also to the south. So we feel that the, the, Pil- the massive Pilgangora system um, continues and extends onto our licences, probably at depth, uh, and we want to test that. We want to test that theory. So we did plan two really quite strategic drill holes um, a few months ago. Subsequent to that, we do believe that there is another method which we're going to trial. We, we are talking to a, a neighbour uh, to collaborate um, and it's 2D seismics. We feel that the 2D seismic survey over an area will really give us a lot more geological information that we can take forward in the drill program to help us uh, target uh, those drill holes more successfully. And the 2D seismics is reasonably new technology uh, in the minerals business, but it's even newer uh, looking for lithium, um, particularly spodumene pegmatite uh, targets as well. So we're very excited about this. So you're looking for a repeat of Pilbara Minerals Pulgangura deposit? Spot on. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. And look, we, we know that uh, the Mount York uh, project, uh, and particularly here the, the Mount York uh, lithium project, because of course there is a gold deposit there as well. But the lithium, we know that whole area is in fertile lithium territory. We found spodumene pegmatites at surface on our ground, uh, on both the two licence areas we hold around Pilgangora, and we know that we're in fertile territory. So really it's a, it's a, qu- a question of uh, where do we best site drill holes, and now we've got the finance, 
uh, in place. Uh, it's going to give us really a, a, a good arsenal to uh, to move forward and to drill a few targets that we feel uh, haven't been tested in in the past, but certainly at surface are giving us an indication that there's spodumene pegmatites uh, there. Now you mentioned the gold project up in the Pilbara too. We shouldn't just skate over that. It's it's a big gold project, isn't it? You you know quite a lot about it. Yeah, well, certainly when I joined a year ago, uh, we had eight hundred and seventy three thousand ounces there, and I I looked at the project and I just said that this is a project that needs to needs to be drilled and needs to be pushed forward and and advanced, uh, possibly through to development. Now, I'm true to my word. I said we could increase the resources. We have. In 12 months, we've almost, well, over doubled the, uh, the resource inventory. So we're now at 1.6 million ounces. Uh, and I still feel that we've got a, a long way to go. We've got a strategy to advance that. And the next logical target would be 2 million ounces. And we have internally, we have a strategy to move that, that project forward to 2 million ounces. And then look at the uh, what we need to do to bring that into um, uh, a, a project that potentially could go to mining. So is this a consolidation game up in the Pilbara, Peter, and the gold? Is it possible for the gold project to be part of a, a wider uh, collection of, of pits and, and the like that are brought together, or is it really just a standalone project for Kairos alone? Well, there's certainly other projects in that area, and uh, we know that uh, there's the massive Hemi deposit of um, De Grey. Uh, we're certainly friendly with all of our neighbours, and um, well, we'd like to think that we're going to grow the project larger than De Grey. Uh, that's going to be fantastic for our shareholders. But we we see um, a strategy to to move the uh, the resources to two million ounces and above, and that's really the first focus. Um, I think when you when you're developing a project like this, you really want to try and get the biggest resource number that you can. And, and we'll follow that path. Um, maybe we get a tap on the shoulder in future. Um, maybe uh, we look at monetizing the, the project in a, um, in a particular way. Um, so I think the, the story with Mount York is it's, it's a great asset. It's, it's been there with Kairos for a number of years now. And I, I guess I always get asked that question. You know, you've got fantastic lithium assets, you've got fantastic gold assets. What's the view and, and what do you want to do with the company going forward? And, and, you know, my response to that is always we need to add value in both camps, in both commodities, and, and really look at a strategy to, uh, to give shareholders great value going forward. So, so what, is, what is the valuation equation? I mean, what's the company's market cap and what sort of leverage should investors see? Yeah, currently we've got about a, 30, a mid-30s million, so 35 million market cap. Uh, we feel that the company has been valued really on the gold project only, and that's probably a low value on a 1.6 million ounce uh, peer comparison. Um, there's no upside, or there is, sorry, there's plenty of upside for investors in terms of the uh, the lithium assets, because if we're true and the, the value has been carried really with a gold project, then the lithium assets that we've just spoken about uh, carry, at the moment, no value. So in- the, you, got, you got the gold and the lithium assets come for free. Absolutely. So presumably you stick a hole into some spodumene uh, near Kalgoorlie, there's, we're up and away. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I would say that that would translate into a very, very healthy share price. So what do you do from here? What's, what do the next few months bring for Kairos and shareholders? Well, I'll come back to the, the word discovery, and that's really what I want to do for the, uh, for the shareholders. We need to discover things. And, you know, moving the gold project forward is, uh, is on the agenda, but the highest uh, priority right now for the company is moving and, and drilling the, the lithium assets and really seeing what's, what's under the ground. Now, you've got a few people around you that know know what success in the exploration field's about, haven't you? The chairman's done it before. Uh, tell us a bit about his background and, and what he knows about discovery. Well, Klaus is a, is a very well-known mining entrepreneur. and uh, Klaus Ekhoff. Klaus Ekhoff, absolutely. Um, I call him Klaus because he's so well-known um, uh, that everybody just knows it's Klaus Ekhoff. Um, we, Klaus and I have worked together on projects for... 
or oh, probably the best part of 20 years now when I worked in East Africa under Klaus. And we, we've done deals and I've, I've really been part of uh, the gold story with Klaus, particularly Moto Gold Mines. I was actually an outsider uh, coming to, to buy uh, Moto Gold Mines when Klaus owned it. Um, Klaus is, like I said, a, a well-known uh, mining entrepreneur. With He's done a lot of good things in Western Australia and in Africa and continues uh, that strategy going forward to, to add value. But on top of that, he's also been extremely um, proactive in both the gold space and the lithium space, having uh, recognised the value of the Monono project in the DRC, which is arguably the world's largest uh, lithium project now. Now, also, the board has uh, Mark Calderwood as a director. Absolutely. and, and Mark's, Mr Lithium, as he's known around the traps. Absolutely right. And, and Mark's one of the only directors on the ASX that has developed both gold and lithium mines, not just projects, but mines. He's actually built mines. And uh, we're extremely happy to have uh, Mark on the board. Uh, he gives me a lot of technical advice as well. Um, and, of course, the other board members are Zane Lewis, uh, on the corporate compliance side, and we can't forget Phil Coulson on the financing side. And I think what we, as a board, we're extremely well balanced. And uh, the financing deal, for instance, which uh, Phil has worked uh, quite tires- tirelessly on, is just a- another example of how the Kairos board moves forward. We are extremely um, uh, um we're extremely active looking at ways to increase the value of, of the shares in, in Kairos. And I think we're at a stage now, we're at a, um, we're really at a, a, a point where we need to go and drill some more holes and, and make some more discoveries. But you've got the money to do that. You've got the, the support of shareholder in Global Lithium. You've got the guys on the board who have been there and done it before. Uh, and with a $30 million market cap, plenty of leverage. Absolutely right. Look, the, the future's looking really good for yeah, us. Yeah, and some, and some great addresses. Well, Peter, it's been fantastic to talk to you. you. I can see why you say the company's at a bit of a tipping point. You know, that sort of market cap and that coming news flow would be for, for investors who have got an appetite for uh, the risk and return ratio that comes with expiration. You'd have to say Kairos must be well and truly on the radar. Uh, we look forward to seeing what the next few months brings. Thanks for your time. Thanks ever so much. You've been listening to The Whole Truth, a Resources Rising Stars podcast produced by Resource Media, hosted by Paul Armstrong for Reed Corporate. Please note that Reed Corporate does not provide investment advice and investors should seek personalised advice before making any investment decisions. 